The boogeyman of gaming has finally been exposed. And unlike the fictional mythical creature adults use to scare kids, Sweet Baby Inc. is real and is actively contributing to the downfall of modern gaming. Several claims have been made over the last few months regarding the consulting firm, Sweet Baby Inc., and how they've been affecting the gaming industry through its heavy involvement in Western Game Studios development. On paper, Sweet Baby Inc.'s mission is to bring inclusivity and diversity into the games that they work on by handling things like how video game characters are written, and overseeing in-game dialogue, how to properly convey a particular culture, and making sure that unintended racism doesn't accidentally happen in the portrayal. And again, on paper, that doesn't sound too bad, right? But if there's one thing we've learned about companies that are constructed for the purpose of ticking off diversity checkboxes, it's that oftentimes they end up having a net negative effect on everything they touch even going so far as being blatantly racist and or sexist themselves. But if the correct checkboxes are ticked, this qualifies companies like Sweet Baby Inc. to receive ESG investment, or environmental, social, and governance funding. In the case of Sweet Baby Inc., companies like BlackRock are its biggest investor. So how does this investment actually work? Well, companies like BlackRock, who is the world's largest asset manager, with $10 trillion in assets, allegedly have a scorecard that factors in many different areas of diversity, LGBTQ allyship, BIPOC representation, and so on. And depending on the score a particular company receives, they will be eligible to receive investment from BlackRock. Publishers have been turning to companies like Sweet Baby Inc. or others in order to increase their ESG scores and secure extra funding. And I think the most important takeaway with that is to realize that video game companies aren't trying to be diverse because they want to, they're doing it for monetary gain. If you pay any attention to online gaming discourse, for years now you've probably heard or noticed yourself that video games have gone woke. I think most understand what is meant by that statement, but I think that the term woke has been a bit overused and lost a little bit of its meaning in the last couple years. Having a female protagonist doesn't make a game woke. We've had female protagonists for decades. Having a gay character doesn't make a game woke. We've also had them for decades. And having a person of color as a protagonist or character also doesn't make a game woke. Again, we've had them for decades. This sort of proves that companies like Sweet Baby Inc. don't really have a reason to exist from a practicality standpoint. Gaming has always had natural diversity ever since its inception. The problem really comes down to companies like Sweet Baby Inc. replacing natural diversity with forced diversity and deliberately radical socio-political themes. There is a very real difference between how diversity has historically been treated in gaming and how it's now being treated in recent years. Hence, all of the woke debates online. Taking a look at Sweet Baby Inc.'s client list, it's easy to see what woke versus naturally diverse looks like. Xbox Game Studios, Ubisoft, EA, Rocksteady, Santa Monica Studio, 2K, Square Enix, the list goes on and on. If you've played the games they've been hired on for consulting from these studios, then you've likely noticed the many aspects where Sweet Baby Inc. has displayed their influence. When companies like this are hired on by these publishers, they give them a lot of creative control over every aspect of the game. According to their own website, Sweet Baby Inc. works on the writing for cinematics, dialogue, UI and UX, barks, meaning the dialogue characters might say while you're walking down a street, and copywriting. I think I speak for many of us when I say that video games writing, dialogue, and both UI and UX design have been declining dramatically over the years, and we might have companies like this to thank for that. They also have large control within the overall narrative of games, including story pitches, world building, character creation, narrative design, story feedback tweaks, and more. Again, need I comment on the sad current state of video game narratives? And lastly and probably most relevant is their paragraph on representation. So let's just read the whole thing. We believe that representation is key to connecting players and audiences and we offer a few ways to help your team and project gain the perspective needed to make it happen. We're part of an inclusive and knowledgeable community of diverse consultants, able to cover a wide range of cultural and sensitivity topics. Our approach leads with the creation of joy in marginalized players, and seeks to be additive rather than strictly corrective. We do cultural consultation, sensitivity, and inclusivity reading. 
risk and opportunity assessment, and more. In these short paragraphs describing their mission statement, they've conveyed to me personally the ways in which they will go out of their way to overcorrect and overreact to any and all things that could possibly be offensive to anyone, leading to a heightened overfocus on how to solve problems that might not have even been there in the first place. They're at the point where they've been almost inventing problems to solve in order to be hired to solve them. It's a smart business move that leads to disastrous outcomes. The simple act of video game publishers and developers hiring consultation firms to force diversity is again why so many people share the sentiment that gaming has gone woke. So I want to revisit what I said a bit earlier in the video. Why are video game studios and publishers hiring companies like Sweet Baby Inc? I said they're doing it for monetary investments from companies like BlackRock. And thankfully because so much of this is public, we can look a bit further into how that works right now. So we've already established that BlackRock is one of the largest asset managers and investment firms in the world. But there's another important player in the scene who's almost at that same level. Vanguard. Managing over $7.7 .7 trillion versus BlackRock's $10 trillion. And like BlackRock, Vanguard also has a large focus on ESG investments. So if you remember that idea of the ESG scorecard I talked about earlier, this is where that comes in a bit more. So in order to seek investment from these two, gaming companies have been publishing what's known as an ESG report. Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft, and EA all post this annually. In the reports, they focus on discussing how they want to have more representation of everything you can imagine. The hopes is that BlackRock and Vanguard will take notice and reach out to them and offer them large sums of money to invest into them. And so far, it's been working. For example, if we take a look at EA, we see that the two largest shareholders of the company are both BlackRock and Vanguard. Take two Interactive, again, largest shareholders, BlackRock and Vanguard. Microsoft and Warner Brothers, same exact story. All four of these companies are all clients of Sweet Baby Inc. I think you get the point. These companies all take heavy investment from trillion dollar companies that emphasize ESG scores. So they will continue to prioritize ESG in their games so long as BlackRock and Vanguard keep bankrolling them. This again isn't being done because BlackRock, Vanguard, or any of these video game publishers are trying to be morally or ethically right. No. Like all things in the business world, this is about money and control. Nothing more. Looking good on paper and actually being good are two very, very different things. A lot of this Sweet Baby Inc, BlackRock, and Vanguard stuff has been going on behind the scenes for a while now, and while it's been public information, it hasn't been discussed more seriously until these last few months, maybe six months or so. And even then, it hasn't been super mainstream yet. Until the most recent Sweet Baby Inc incident. With the recent controversy surrounding Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, more people have been taking notice of Sweet Baby Inc and the detrimental effect they've been having on the games industry. Because yes, they had a hand in creating this monstrosity. Which is why so many have noticed a complete tonal shift from the Batman Arkham games. Spider-Man 2 had a similar thing happen compared to Spider-Man 2018, with the most recent sequel having shoehorned in diversity at every turn, from Mary Sue moments to side quests filled with sociopolitical agendas. Starfield, need we even discuss the effect they had on this game's narrative and character design? The Saints Row reboot, Forspoken, Sweet Baby Inc. has certainly left their mark on the industry and leaves behind them a wake of disastrous and disappointing games. So these constant disappointments with games has led to more people learning about Sweet Baby Inc. Which then finally brings us to the Sweet Baby Inc. detected group being created on Steam. Which is essentially just a group that lists any and all games that have been involved with Sweet Baby Inc. It started off as a relatively small group, but has now exploded into over 100,000 followers all thanks to Sweet Baby Inc. themselves. When people started sharing this group around online for those who might want to join, the people at Sweet Baby Inc. thought that the group's existence is harmful and are actively trying to get it removed and even trying to strong-arm Steam into banning the user that created the group. A narrative designer at Sweet Baby Inc. made a few posts on Twitter targeting the group and its creator with hopes of him losing access to his account, which would also include his game library. Trying to make your followers mass harass and report someone is against Twitter's TOS and YouTube's, which is why I'm reminding you right now, do not go and harass anyone at Sweet Baby Inc. 
because then you'd be stooping to their level, and you should have more self-respect than that. Another employee of Sweet Baby Inc., along with Zoe Quinn, have also been the topic of some more drama. Zoe Quinn, if you don't know, was a frenzied Gamergate feminist that made false accusations about a game developer that led to him ending himself over the false accusations. Meanwhile, Zoe profited off donations and pretended to be the victim. Well, in 2014, Zoe Quinn and this Sweet Baby Inc. employee, Lego Butts, DDoSed a website called The Fine Young Capitalists. But why? Well, The Fine Young Capitalists were running a game jam with the goals of encouraging women to join the gaming industry, producing a game, and donating it to charity. They had taken ideas from women about games they'd like to make, produced five pitches, and also produced concept art. The woman who had their idea selected would be given the role of producer and receive 8% of the proceeds. The Fine Young Capitalists' own production staff will then produce the game over six months with the female winner as the producer. And then, most of that money made on the game would go to charity. But on February 28th, 2014, the Fine Young Capitalists were then doxxed, DDoSed and banned on Twitter after Zoe Quinn and Lego Butts, in their own words, DDoSed and accidentally killed an exploitative startup website. The charity ended up losing $10,000 in sponsors because of the doxing, and Lego Butts went on to dox more people who worked for the charity. The reason they did this? They took issue with some of the charity's policies. The point of sharing these examples is to point out some of the prominent people Sweet Baby Inc. employs and the things they've done and said online, a lot of which is pretty disturbing. I think the sweetest irony in all of this is that while people like this try to come off as morally superior, they continue to work with the most morally bankrupt companies on the planet and work tirelessly to suppress free speech online. The thing about this Steam group is that it's perfectly within someone's rights to not want to buy games that involve Sweet Baby Inc. There's no legitimate reason Steam could ban this, despite Sweet Baby Inc. employees trying their best to get Steam to do so. In theory, someone who wants to play all of Sweet Baby Inc. games could even use this group to find a list of those games. It's nothing other than a tracker to show which games they've worked on. Again, this group might have stayed pretty small, but the Streisand effect was in full effect, in this case, because the comments from these employees only brought more attention to the group and made more people want to join it. Companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and by extension BlackRock and Vanguard have done nothing positive for the gaming industry. It's led to closures of studios like Luminous Productions, the creators of Forspoken, and Volition Games, which created Saints Row. And now, Rocksteady might be on the chopping block after the failure of Suicide Squad. If there's one thing we keep being reminded of in the entertainment industry, it's to not attack the fans or blame a game's failure on the fans. Because good games made by studios without these outside influences are still the ones being the most successful. And diversity is fine when it's done naturally, and I encourage it, but not when it's being forced and funded by trillion dollar companies. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section, like this video if you agreed with it, and I'll see you all in the next one.